Hey everyone. So uh, my good friend Tom Davis told me that uh, I needed to stop posting photos of New Zealand to him um, because if I wasn't careful he was going to choose to move here. So um, this one's for you Tom. Challenge accepted. Uh, this week's episode I wanted to have a quick talk to you about a concept that I teach when I'm transitioning uh, often large project-based organizations to more responsive organizations. Um, say a quick hello to the boys who are chilling in between retreats on a winter's day. Um, <laughs> so this concept um, is about having two different types of portfolios. So when I walk into an organization and they've got an existing uh, portfolio of work, often what's happening is there's a whole bunch of projects that are going on uh, within that and the first job to do is really to try and get a handle on well how the heck do we do this in a slightly different way maybe um, we've never tried agile portfolio management before maybe we're halfway through it but it's not working that well maybe the teams are working agile maybe they're not um, maybe we've got people in the organization that are really passionate about strategic portfolio, portfolio management and they're just really bummed to see that it's not happening so um, so that's, that's kind of the context in which often, you know, walk into an organization and we've got an existing bunch of projects that we want to do something with and we want to try and do it a bit better. So what do you do? Well, one of the first things that I teach is this concept of two different types of portfolios. Um, we have, what, what we, the, the main purpose is that we're trying to move towards uh, a, portfolio of work that is outcome based so we have clear line of sight to customers what customers want what they need um, and and those outcomes and we want to make sure that all our work's lined up that way so this idea of two different types of portfolios is it's a bit of a bridging mechanism that I'll use so if we can't go all the way to you know, very small pieces of work lined up with strategy straight in one go. Often this idea of portfolios is really, really helpful because it gives us a bit of a, mid, almost a mid-tier of, um, of structure. Um, but more importantly, it helps us to get clarity around strategy and clarity of how our work's lining up, particularly when you've got portfolios of work that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So, two types of portfolios. The first is what we would call uh, an outcome-based portfolio. Uh, it's a project portfolio or program of work where the outcome is really well understood. So, we can put a nice tidy box around it. We know what's happening. We know what's going on. We've got a high degree of confidence that this thing will get us the outcome that we want. And we will often do, um, we'll often do the business case at the, the level of the totality of that portfolio. So there's not a lot of unknowns. And the examples that I use here are things like, historically, moving a data center. We've got to get out of a lease of a building. We've got to move a whole bunch of kit. Um, and Excuse the waterfall, Tom. <laughs> and so we've got, to, we've got to get out of a building, we've got to move a bunch of kit, and we've got to move it into another building. That outcome is relatively well understood. We've got a lease coming up, we've, you know, we've got to move from one spot to another. It's, it's an outcome-based portfolio. The, the work is understood, the pathway is probably pretty well defined. We know we've just got to get kit out of a building. Um, we've got a high degree of confidence about how to do the work, and we'll do a business case at that overall level to say, hey, let's just, let's just make it happen. Um, so that's the first type of portfolio. And then the second type of portfolio is much more aspirational. So this might be things where the end point's not really defined, or we know that it's not going to have a short life. This is going to be something that's long lived. Maybe it's a strategic theme in our organization. I always use the example here of improving customer experience because somewhere in strategy, somewhere, somebody's written down something to the effect of go and improve customer experience, right? 
So those aspirational portfolios of work, those programs and those projects and those portfolios that are uh, aspirational in nature, they don't have a defined endpoint. Um, we have a clear goal, like we know what it is we're trying to achieve, but we don't know how long it'll take us. There's uncertainty about the path to get there. Um, maybe we know a few ideas up front, but we don't know the whole picture. And so in that case, we probably don't want a business case at the entire level. We could. We could choose to do uh, that approval of funds to say, hey, for this year, we think it's worth investing X million dollars towards this outcome. You can totally do that. Um, but equally, another way that my clients often run it is that they will business case their work at the smaller level. So those sub outcomes, those capabilities, those pieces of work within that portfolio that we know are going to get us an outcome. And so we will business case for the intent of uh, understanding the level of investment and the impact we're looking to have. We'll business case at that lower level because it's better understood. Whereas the entire aspiration is not necessarily clearly understood. We don't have a clear pathway. Very, very hard to fit into uh, financial kind of procedures around lock-in unit present value. It's just not really going to work. And so there is a really fine line here too, right? Because what we're starting to do is we're starting to talk about these bridging mechanisms where we're making change, but are we necessarily making a whole bunch of change? Are we potentially walking the line of doing something very similar to what we do today and risking not making enough change? So it's a fine line, right? But that was the concept I wanted to share today. Two different types of portfolios. So if you're looking at your entire program work, your entire portfolio of work, and you're trying to work out what the heck to do, step one, go out and get those strategic outcomes for your organization or your business unit that you know are in play. Step two, line up the work that you can, and then start to apply this idea of two different types of portfolios. So those outcomes that are relatively well understood, let's business case at the total level, check for traffic, um, let's uh, wrap those up, they're well understood, get them in motion. And for those that are more aspirational, then let's really focus on breaking them down into small chunks, hold the context of the aspiration at, the, at that highest level, hold that context. This is a collection of work towards an outcome. We need that context to give our teams. But then business case at the smaller chunks, business case at the capabilities. So they might be pieces of work that are half a million dollars worth or one to three months. Um, you know, business case down at that lower level so that you're encouraging the behavior of releasing those funds when you have a clearer understanding of the outcome and the impact that you're going to have. So that's it from me this week. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Hit me up with a comment below. Uh, let me know if you're applying this in your organization. Maybe use different words. So I will often muddle my language by mixing and matching all over the place. But, uh, but essentially what we're talking about is when we talk about portfolios or programs, we're talking about collections of work. And what we're trying to understand is how do we best organize those so that we can retain that context of the big picture and at the same time make sure that we have measurable chunks of work. Uh, we can see the impact that we want to have we are measuring our investment and we're getting those opportunities for feedback loops along the way so that we can choose to stop, to continue with what we're doing or maybe to pivot. So that's the intent. So let me know if you're using this tool, if you've maybe we've worked together and you've used this tool in the past, um, maybe you use something similar or something different. And maybe let me know, for those of you out there that are into this idea of strategic portfolio management, talk to me about the crossover, because there is a lot of crossover. Sometimes these things are really, really close and it's just a subtle difference in our mindset that means that we, uh, the way that we approach the work is slightly different. So hit me up with a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And uh, I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. And I'll see you again next week.